This robot can complete the senior task in just under two minutes. I'll show details of the robot design and then explain the main MyBlocks used. There are two wheels on each side. I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Let me know what you think. On the underside you can see there is a grabber for the containers at the back and for the boats at the front. Two light sensors are used for the line follower so the robot will follow the middle of the black line. The same motor is used for the container grabber and for the boat grabber. This is possible because the two functions never have to be done at the same time. Here you see a view of the motor from the other side. A colour sensor is required to read the colours of the two marker blocks. This is mounted on one side of the robot so the colours can be saved when pushing the boat to the fuel. The front grabber has to grab the large boat and the small boat. It needs to be quite robust to be able to turn the boats and to move them around. Here you can see the boat grabber in more detail, from above and from the front. The container grabber has to pick up the smaller white or green containers and the larger blue ones. It also has to be able to place them cleanly on the boats. Here you see the motor drive to the grabber and a view of the grabber from above and from the front. Well that completes our look at the hardware. Now we can move on to the software. I will explain the my blocks I have used to move the robot around. The my block on the left will drive at a speed in percent set by parameter MP for a time in seconds set by parameter time. First we reset the timer and then stay in the repeat until loop till we reach the time set in the time parameter. Inside the repeat until loop we move straight at the speed set by parameter MP. The variable MP is only added so that the speed can be monitored with the line graph. The my block on the right is similar to the one on the left and it has the same two parameters. The difference is that it follows a line rather than just driving straight ahead. Inside the repeat until loop there is a proportional line follower. We first form an error signal which is the difference in the reflected light from the two sensors. This will be zero when the robot is on the middle of the black line. The error signal is then multiplied by a factor, here 0.2, to get the control signal. This is then added to the speed of one wheel and subtracted from the other, so that the robot always tries to follow the line. The value of the factor has to be adjusted for good performance. At the end, I will give a link to my video which explains how to do this. Now we will look at two more my blocks. The one on the left drives straight ahead until both light sensors are on black. This gives a low value for the reflected light. We stay inside the repeat until loop until the reflected light from both sensors is less than 60%, which means both are on black. At the start, we set the reflected light to 100%, so that we don't immediately drop out of the repeat until loop. Inside the loop, we first calculate the total reflected light, and then drive straight ahead at the speed given by the parameter MP. This continues until the total light falls below 60%. As before, the variable MP is only used for display on the line graph. The my block on the right is similar to the one on the left, but it will drive straight ahead until the total reflected light is greater than 180%. This means that both sensors are on white. Driving till both sensors are on black is used to drive up to a black line from the side. Driving till both sensors are on white is used to drive up to a line from the blue black red. Now we'll move on to the next two my blocks. The one on the right is very simple. It will drive straight ahead at a speed set by the parameter MP for a distance in centimetres set by the parameter distance. The block on the left combines two functions. It is a proportional line follower and will keep following the line until a black line junction is reached. These two functions have already been explained in previous blocks. Now we come to two blocks with speed ramping. The robot drives around more accurately if the speed is smoothly increased at the beginning of a movement and smoothly reduced at the end. The block on the left just drives straight. The parameter MP1 sets the speed at the start, MP2 sets the speed at the end. The parameter time defines how long it takes to ramp from MP1 to MP2. We first reset the timer to zero and then stay in the repeat until loop till the time is completed. Inside the repeat until loop, we calculate a value for the speed MP based on the timer. When the timer is at zero, MP equals MP1. When the timer reaches the value set in the parameter time, MP equals MP2. In between, the speed is proportional to the time. To make the robot slow down, 
set MP1 to a higher value than MP2. The My block on the right combines speed ramping with line following. The ramping function is identical to the block on the left. Now we come to the turns. These are very simple blocks using the gyro yaw parameter to set the angle turned. Before a turn, the yaw is set to zero. After this, a short time delay is recommended. The spin turns rotate the wheels in opposite directions to spin on the spot. They use parameter MP to set the speed of the turn and parameter angle to set the number of degrees turned. The robot simply spins at the speed MP until the angle has been reached. The pivot turns have a third parameter called direction. This can be used to make a softer turn where one wheel turns less than the other. A low value for direction gives a softer turn. That was my first attempt at the WRO 2023 Senior Competition. In my next video, I'll be showing my second attempt, which got the time down to 90 seconds. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to my channel? I'll be making some more videos like this soon.